In this example, we're going to create some bosses to hold this L298 stepper driver in place. Now I created a drawing for the stepper driver here, and I really just put some dimensions only for the hole locations. That way we know where they are so that we can design accordingly. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to heed the dimensions that we see here, 37.3 and 3 millimeters for the hole. And I'm going to come to my tank body and start making sketches for the boss. So 37.3 and 3 millimeters. I'm going to create a sketch on this face. Come to rectangle, center rectangle. 37.3 millimeters by 37.3 millimeters. And with this um, square created, what we want to do next is we want to make sure that we can see our sketch. So if necessary, you may need to come to your display settings. And I'm going to click on all four of these lines of my sketch, and I'm going to make them construction in the sketch palette right here. And now that they're construction, I'm going to come to create come down to point, and I'm going to place four points. And with those four points created, the next thing that I want to do is I want to create four circles. And as we know, our hole is three millimeters. So we're going to keep that in mind. We're going to make um, four three millimeter holes. So just click on the center, type in three millimeters. We don't want to get too fancy with dimensioning right now. We're just uh, doing this for an example. And let's create um, a couple more sketches here. And I want to make this um, a dimension based off of our first dimension. So I'm going to set a dimension between this circle and the outer circle. And I want to make this 0.1. And I can always change this. I can make it a little bit thinner at 0.06 maybe. And I want to do that for the other ones as well. This time I'm just going to drag out the circles. And I'm going to come to Equal Constraint and just click on the first circle and then the next circle. And I'm just going to finish my sketch, come to Extrude. Click on the ring only. And now what I can do is I can just kind of extrude upward. And I can also set a taper angle if I want of 0.25. But we're going to keep it um, just coming straight up for now. And if you need to, you can always change this, as, as always. You can make it lower if you want, or higher. It really depends on, on what you want to do. Now, we don't know the location of where this is going to be yet. We're just kind of guessing, but this is going to be a good educated guess for what we need next. I'm also going to throw a couple of fillets here just to strengthen this up a little bit. So I'm going to click on the four um, bottom edges where this connects to the part. I'm just going to kind of drag it out a little bit. And so from here, uh, this looks, it looks pretty good for our first kind of uh, example. And I'm going to come back to our assembly. And I'm going to update my assembly. And once this updates, we're going to be able to hopefully uh, create a um, frame of reference and some constraints to connect our board to our newly created um, boss pattern. So as you can see, it updated, and it's very close to where the location is of our motor controller. Now we're only doing this for one for this example, so I'm going to click on this motor controller. And the motor controller is not moving, and there is a reason for that. It's likely grounded. So I'm going to right-click, unground it, and now that it's ungrounded, I can just 
um, click on one of its faces and I can drag it. I'm just going to drag this up. And what I want to do next is kind of zoom in on it, come to the joint. Always hit capture position so that way nothing else flies around within your assembly. I'm going to click on motion. We're going to click where it says revolute. It's a second option. Come to position, snap, click on that circle. And we're going to look down on our boss and we're going to select the inner circle right there. So as you can see, it's giving us a nice preview of what that's going to look like. And that is in fact exactly what we want. I'm going to hit OK. And now what I've essentially done is I've created this sort of boss pattern, these four bosses, and it allows for air to travel underneath the chip and it also allows for pins underneath the chip to not sit inside of the housing and, and poke into the base of, that, of the our housing. Um, not only that, it also allows us to put screws in. I could put four screws in here now. And those four screws can hold down our assembly. So that's kind of the gist of it. And I would do this for the rest of my components. I would do it for this motor controller, for the battery pack. I would do it for these four holders on my Raspberry Pi case. And doing this is going to ensure that um, none of your parts fly around inside your assembly housing. Uh, thank you.